Hello everyone, Ian here. Currently on my way up into the Yorkshire Dales. I had a decent constructive day working today. And the sun's out, so I thought I'd uh, make the quick blast up into the Dales, see if I can catch uh, a bit of sunset action. I'm going to go up to Malham, Malham Tarn. It's a place I know really quite well. Um, it's only probably about an hour and a quarter until the sun sets, so I didn't want to go anywhere. I had to explore to get a competition. I know pretty much where I'm going and, uh, and what I'm going to photograph. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed uh, the sun stays out. It's looking, although it's sunny, it's looking very, very hazy in the sky. So, I'm not sure what kind of colours or sunset we're going to get, but, you know, might as well go up there and find out. So, uh, yeah. See you in a bit once I'm uh, on my way out to my location. Right, so I've made it. Made it up to Malham. This is Malham Tarn. See behind me. Some of you might have been up here before. A lot of people may have been to Malham Cove, which is uh, about a, a mile behind me. It's a lovely sunny spring day, which makes a break from all the uh, all the snow we've had recently in the UK. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a hunt around for a, uh, a composition. If you can see, there's, there's lots of these kind of rocks on the foreshore. I'm going to try and use them as some bit of foreground interest. It's great. There's, there's very little wind up here today as well, so the water's really lovely and calm. I won't need my uh, won't need any ten stop filters or anything, I don't think. But we'll see once I get set up. And uh, the only downside is because it's quite a nice warm day. There's plenty of midges and flies everywhere, landing everywhere on me. So fingers crossed, I'm just. Uh, Get used to them a little bit but uh, I'll set up my composition and see you in a moment. Right so I'm set up on a, a composition um, I'm having to stand back a bit from the the water's edge just because literally the flies are that thick the midges I get down there you stand still for more than 10 seconds there just thousand, millions of them uh, almost breathing them in down there so I'm standing back a little bit I'm just gonna wait for the uh, the Sun to get a little bit lower in the sky um, got a nice composition got down low on the tripod with the uh, using those rocks in the foreground lovely still water uh, probably might put a uh, an ND filter on just to make sure that water is really really calm and flat there's a couple of lads just uh, come over uh, I think you might be able to see in the background decided to have a swim in the lake so I'm hoping that uh, they don't uh, ruin the uh, ruin the water too much but I might go in but just before they they take a dip I might take a few uh, a few exposures just to get some uh, something in the bag and then fingers crossed if well if, if they do start swimming uh, around in front of me then I'll just whack a uh, whack an ND filter on it should uh, should hide them but uh, fingers crossed I'll uh, I'll come back once the sun's got a bit lower um, hopefully when the sun goes down a little bit these midges might start dispersing a bit as well but uh, we shall see see you in a bit all right bit of an update I've moved along the uh, the lake a little bit uh, see if I'm Walk back a little bit again got my uh, my tripod right down low and I've just found another couple of smaller rocks to focus on I've done I uh, haven't been using any ND filters on this one um, not really neat I've only got a polarizer on there just so I can see uh, the some sort of rocks and, and pebbles below the, the water nice to see them in the final thing I've been bracketing taking five exposures at a time uh, I've also been taking some with my my finger over the uh, over the lens to stop the uh, the lens flare uh, that's that's coming from shooting straight into the sun, um, and then I've also taken some f22. So most of my exposures are in f8, and I have gone to f22 for a couple of them just to get a really bright sun star. So hopefully, I mean the sun's just about to uh, just about to go down now. So fingers crossed, I might have something useful. Um, there's nothing in the sky in terms of clouds or anything like that, so it's a fairly minimalist composition minimalist shot you know a couple of little rocks in the water nice calm flat water uh, and not really a thing in the sky so we'll see what happens when I get back into the computer blend all the explosion together and uh, and go from there well I finished all in all I think it was a pretty successful uh, little trip actually I uh, got some nice little uh, little compositions going a uh, couple landscape couple portrait uh, the Sun's gone down now on the video it looks like it's more colourful than it is really but uh, there's not a great deal of uh, kind of blue hour light going on uh, and without the sun I'm um, not sure if the uh, the composition would be that interesting I've just tried another another composition after the sun went down so we'll see what that looks like when I get back in the computer but yeah pretty happy with how things have gone I'll see you back in Photoshop see how I'll probably get these processed 
Right, back in Photoshop. So I've opened up my RAW files out of Lightroom. I've done uh, right click on all the ones that I want to edit and gone to open as layers in Photoshop. The only thing I've done so far is I've auto aligned them. So I've selected all my layers, gone to edit, auto align layers, just to make sure they're all, all aligned before I start exposure blending. Um, this is one of my vertical compositions, uh, portrait compositions that I did. Um, we've got some uh, some rocks in the foreground here. Let me just go back to my sort of base exposures here. So lovely rocks in the foreground, and uh, and obviously the setting sun in the background. Again, there's not a great deal going on this sky really. So we'll see how it turns out. Might not be the the most interesting of skies, but no, I, I quite like it anyway. Um, so let me just go through my layers. So what I've got here is my darkest exposure, which I'll be using for the mainly the sky and the sun. Above that, I've got the uh, the same exposure, but stopped down to f22. Um, let me just zoom in on the sun. You've got to see, the reason I did this was to get some of them uh, you know, really clear sun spikes, uh, whatever you uh, you want to call them coming out there. It's not a great deal of difference, but uh, I quite like the effect of, of stopping right down to F22. Uh, above that, I've got my, my zero base exposure there. I've then got my plus one there, which is even brighter, starting to see the, the rocks in the foreground. And then I've got my brightest exposure, which I'll be using for the, the immediate foreground. Above that, I've got, so I took two different versions of this, uh, this plus two uh, exposure. Um, one without a polarizer, which is what you can see on here, and then one with a polarizer, and you can see what difference it makes when I click on it. There you go, it just removes all the glare off the, the, uh, the water in the foreground. So you can see them uh, in rocks and stones and, and pebbles and everything in the foreground. I, I think it actually looks better without the polarizer from about here upwards. So I'm just going to mask this in down the bottom. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group my layers into the different uh, exposure values. So uh, the plus two, I'm going to hold down control, click on both, control G, group them. I'm going to rename that to plus two. And then the same thing for my bottom minus one exposures. Hold down control, click on both, control G. I'm going to rename that back to minus one. The reason I do that is so I can work uh, when I'm uh, blending in these layers, I can work on, on both of these within the group at the same time. So for this, I'm probably going to start from the bottom up. Well, actually, no, let's let's start with this polarized. Let's get this, this masked in first. So my polarized layer, I'm just going to hold down Alt and press the layer mask button. That should get rid of it. And I'm just going to take a, a gradient. So pressing G on my keyboard or clicking the gradient tool there making sure my foreground is white. I'm just gonna hold down shift and drag up from the bottom, see how that looks. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, we're still retaining some of that reflection there that I liked, but in the immediate foreground, the rocks and pebbles underneath the water looking a lot clearer, quite like that. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, let's go right down to the bottom. Let's do our sun star. So again, holding alt, clicking the layer mask button, black layer mask. I'm going to take a gradient this time i'm going to select a circular gradient from up the top here or radial gradient as they call it making sure foreground color is white i'm going to click in the center of the sun out there i'm just going to drag it out to about there and there we go that's our sun spike masked in simple as that okay so let's go about blending these together so uh don't need layer mask here i'm going to the first layer mask i'm going to put oh, is this zero so i just click my layer mask uh, put some layer mask on our zero layer now i want to create i'm going to use some uh, luminosity mask this so I, what i'm going to do is use the tony kuiper uh, action set um, i'm just going to use the basic intro panel here um, it's normally the one I use the most. Um, there's plenty of videos out on YouTube about luminosity masking. It's not a particularly new technique these days. Um, I find the Tony Kuiper panel to be fantastic. I'm not sure what version I'm running. It's version four, version five, I, I forget. But I, I'll put a link to uh, to the uh, to Tony Kuiper's website in the description of this video. Go and check out his stuff because it's, it's, it's fantastic. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna control, I'm just gonna click on these and I want to find a mask that's going to be masking out most of the sky. So I'm going to look at the lights masks and just clicking on them with the Tony Kuiper panel actually gives you a preview of what you uh, what the mask can look like. So remember with layer masks, anything white shows through, anything black gets masks. So I think that that top one there is looking pretty good. Now the, the panel also gives you the, um, the ability to edit these masks. So opening up a levels layer, I'm actually just going to brighten the whites a little bit more there. Um, just to make the mask a little more 
contrast in and maybe just bring that contrast in a little bit there. Press OK. That should save our mask in the channels panel. And then I'm just going to simply press select and that should give us a selection of the bright sky there. Now I'm just going to click my layer mask and I press Control H to hide those marketing ants. And again, I'm just going to use a, a gradient. I'm going to click down to the uh, uh, linear gradient again. I'm going to make my foreground color black this time. I'm just going to probably start at the horizon, hold down Shift and just drag right down and see what happens. There we go. So you can see that if I actually turn the mask on and off, you see that's done a pretty good job of showing the exposure below it, which is our, our sky exposure. Now I'll go a little bit further than that. Let's, uh, I'm going to press Control D to deselect. Let's turn on there. And again, I'm going to put a layer mask uh, on. Actually, I'm going to put a black layer mask on this one. So I'm going to hold down Alt, black layer mask there. This time, I want to choose a darks mask. So I want all the things in these, this uh, sort of foreground, I want that to start showing up. So once the, uh, the panel stopped to stop thinking about it. There it is. Right, so let's go through our darks masks and see what uh, what's looking good. Darks 2 is looking pretty good. Again, a bit too restrictive, and yeah, that's, it's going to be one or two. Let's go for darks two and see what happens. So, to click that, I'm going to press. Actually, I'm just going to hit apply and see what happens. So that should apply this uh, this uh, luminosity mask onto our layer mask there. See what happens. Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty good already, straight out of the box. Excellent. Right, now for our plus two, again, I'm going to click on this group. I'm going to put a black layer mask on it. Um, let's have a look. I'm probably going to reset my layer mask. So let me uh, let me just uh, click the luminosity lock, and that should, any layer mask it's creating, it should create it from this plus one layer now. Uh, let's have a look. There we go. Right. So let's scroll through our darks masks again. Let's see what's what. I think a slightly more restrictive mask is going to be best in this situation. So... Probably darks too. I might tweak this a little bit. See what happens. Let's bring the black point in and then bring that white point up as well. Brilliant. Press OK. This time I'm going to make a selection from this because I, I don't think I really wanted to apply in the in the background here. Control H, click our layer mask, gonna get a gradient, make sure our foreground colour is white. And I'm probably going to start at about, let's see, about this middle of this rock, somewhere like that. Drag up, see what happens. There we go, that looks lovely. Excellent. And that's those exposures blended. Um, let's just zoom in to have a look at our, our edges. Check there's uh, no alignment problems. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, happy with that. So let's just go through all our layers from bottom to top. So what do we do? Put our sun star in, F22, then brought in some more of the uh, of the, the brighter, you can see it more in the, this sort of area here. Shows up very nicely and then gradually brighten things up. And then the top ones bring it, bring it in. From here, I would just go through my, my normal workflow, which would be uh, healing, cloning, tidying things up again. Um, I would then go into Camera Raw to do all my, my major adjustments. Then I'd work probably work contrast and color, do a bit of sharpening and uh, see if there's any, any vignetting. But uh, you know, as far as a, a good base exposure to work from, I'm pretty happy with that uh, for my, uh, my future adjustments. So what I'll probably do is I will carry on processing this and put, this, uh, put that at the end of the video as a, a kind of time lapse and then see what the, the finished video looks like. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, that little last minute trip up into the Yorkshire Dales and um, the little vlog that I did, did for you there. Uh, and I hope you got something from this uh, explosion blending tutorial as well. I'll probably go into a little bit more depth about luminosity masking and things like that in future episodes. So if you want to see that, please like and subscribe. It's very much appreciated. Uh, if you subscribe, you'll see your, all my future videos. Been a while since I did my last one, I must uh, must admit. Been pretty busy at work recently, so not had as much time as I wanted for photography. But I'm hoping uh, as that settled down, I might, uh, might have a little bit more time to do uh, do more videos. So please do, please do subscribe if you if you think this is useful. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.